basketball, basketball, there's a lot of optimism about basketball, but not one game has been played. So um, the only thing, you know, more unreliable than a halftime score is, is no score. But, but I think we've got a lot of uh, programs in very good shape. We've got a lot of returning players. And, um, you know, I, I would say this is sort of a culmination of a, of a build. Uh, we've been pretty good over the last three or four years. Uh, we're, you know, recruiting good players, coaching good players, retaining good players. And um, and so, you know, we're going in, into the into the season with, um, with a lot of optimism. And I was with the coaches last night uh, briefly, and they're feeling good. And uh, Lewis working hard. And so, um, you know, it, it's a good time of the year. Um, basketball for so as far as the football is concerned um, you know I didn't play it and I didn't coach it so my insights into it are less but I think you know we've got we have programs in transition we have uh, new coaches at a number of institutions uh, we have uh, multiple coaching staff changes at one institution um, you know we have two institutions that are not eligible for postseason play I think that creates uh, Issues, but they're both playing pretty well, actually. Penn State, Ohio State, have had, uh, had good years. Um, and so, you know, that's hard to know. I know that six years ago, uh, people sat around, you know, I guess it's questioning where we were in basketball. I was talking to the D line, and I um, uh, said, so How long have you been here, John? I said, I'm in sixth year. I said, And what was the buzz around basketball six years ago? I said, It wasn't as positive as it is today. That's for sure. And likewise, if you go back six years, you know, we're playing a 1 2 game, and, and the buzz is around football. It's not around football, obviously, but I have confidence that. Uh, I don't use the word cyclical because I, I think that's a little bit um, of, a, of a designation without any real meaning. It simply means you're going to have times where you're up and you're going to have times when you're down. Um, if you look over the long um, uh, reach uh, in football and in basketball, we're competitive. Uh, we're competitive with some of the best conferences in the country. Um, we're not going to be the best in, in, in either sport every year. In some years we'll be well, in some years we'll be down a little bit. And I think that's that's the ride. I think the, the good news is is that I think we've got the resources and the population base, the coaches that we're going to be uh, we're going to be in the mix. But some years we'll be up and some years we'll be down in both sports. And I think history, at least uh, in the in the 24 years I've been around, I've seen I've seen both, and I've seen both in in, 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 in both sports. And, um, uh, I think that's just sort of the nature of, uh, of, of the world that we live in. It's highly competitive. You have to recruit students, you have to retain them, um, you have to coach them well, they have to improve, and then you have to do it in the context of not only Big Ten, but outside Big Ten. You play 48 football games, you play 120 non-conference basketball games, that's one set of tests, and, and the postseason's another set. And I also think that, you know, the world that we live in, uh, is global and national, and, and comparisons are appropriate, they're apt, we, we want people to be interested, and, and I don't think 25 years ago people thought so much about conference versus conference, but today I think it's on the tip of everybody's tongue, sort of in a way that it wasn't, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So, the, is this pivoting towards football only question? <laughs> I mean, Lauren at least gave me a basketball question with the football question, um, and you're you're now pure football. Um, you know, first of all, you know we went through a, a really intense spring and, and we came together on a model, three contract games and three um, uh, three access games. Um, we're in the middle of a of an ESPN negotiation uh, now. Um, contract games are pretty much power. Um, we've doubled the number of teams that can play uh, for the championship. We've done it in the context of the bowl system. Uh, we've got a committee. We haven't figured out exactly the processes and the procedures. And, um, you know, we're, we're working on revenue sharing, the SPN negotiations, and whether or not to be a seventh bowl or not. Um, and so those are the sort of the outstanding issues. We've got a superstructure. Uh, we, we've got um, a committee. Um, in terms of concept, uh, we've doubled the number of access points. We had basically two open spots uh, in the old system, and now we've got uh, 24 access games with 48 slots over 12 years. 
So that's a doubling of those spots. So there's more access, sort of more opportunity. There's no AQ. We've got a committee. So, um, and yet we still have work to do. Um, but I, I would say, sort of by the first of the year, everything should be uh, sort of put together and, and all the knowns will uh, be total and the unknowns will be, um, you know, eliminated. But right now we're still, uh, still working through uh, the process. So no chance. No, no. No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think that the worst thing we could probably do is rush it and not have the committee uh, done properly, not have the, the game bid properly. We've got the game, um, the semifinal games embedded in the bowl system, and we've got the championship game bid. And, you know, we, we've got to sort of get up and, and ready on that, but I don't expect that there'll be a year, you know, there's no discussion that it'll be a year early. Any basketball questions? <laughs> Do you, in a year like this, do you enjoy the conversation changing when it has been kind of a turbulent football you know, season? I, I really, <clears throat> I really don't have a problem with uh, positive conversations, negative conversations. I uh, live in the world of the facts. Uh, it's the world we live in, not the world we want to live in. So I don't have any problem with uh, with our football season. I don't have any problem with our upcoming basketball season. It is what it is. And, and um, we've had great years, and we've had years where we weren't as competitive. Uh, we're having a good race. We've got some good stories. I'm focusing on that, and um, I'm, you know, believe we've got the resources and the coaches that, that will will make will move forward in a positive way. And uh, as we have in basketball, uh, we've had years in basketball where we wish we were better, but we keep playing. This is our 117th football season, and Lord, I don't know how many how many seasons you've been around. 160. Yeah. It's missed it. <laughs> But, but you've seen it, the, it, it does play out. In a way, it's hard to predict the cycle that you're in, but you have, you have years where you have very strong runs, and, and uh, you have years where you don't, and you just live with that, and you support your coaches and your players, and be a, be a good fan. ...into the new system outside of the Rose Bowl and potential Final Four. Um, how many different bowls could the Big Ten uh, have participation? No, well, I don't think the 6-6 six, six rule is gonna change. Okay, I thought that was gonna change, and, and, and as I read, sort of the body language and the politics of it. I think the 6-6 six, six rule for bowl eligibility stays intact. Um, and so I, I think, you know, we have uh, eight bowl relationships. I would assume that we'll probably have eight bowl relationships going forward. Um, you know, we're in the process of trying to, um, you know, tie down um, the system at the top. And as soon as that's completed, uh, we'll begin discussions. Uh, with incumbent uh, bowls and other bowls that are interested in. I would expect, you know, late winter or springtime, we should have a very good idea uh, of what we want to do. But, you know, we want to be national. You know, we have a, a great relationship with the Rose Bowl, and I think it's stronger than it's ever been. And it's been integrated, as we said it would be, in, into the postseason. So it, it maintains its relevancy while the system evolves. You know, we've got important relationships with Florida and Texas. I think there'll be other opportunities to look at as well, but we've got a great alignment. We expect to have another great alignment. Um, we have a lot of, you know, historic relationships. We've been, you know, with the Capital One Bowl in Orlando for I think 20, 21 years. We've been one of the first tie-ins in the system, but and, and yet we've we've changed. We've been into the Sun Bowl in El Paso, and we've been to Nashville. We've been to San Diego. Those were great places. But they, but when we changed, we went to other great places. Whether it's been in Phoenix in the desert, or whether it's been. Uh, you know, another another bowl in Florida. So I, I really you know like where the system is. I think it's more accessible to more programs. I, I think the movement within the bowl system uh, to a 14 playoff is going to be great for the regular season. And uh, I think the committee process is going to be more rational, more transparent, more understandable. It doesn't mean that more people are not going to be upset because we're going to extend the number of people that, that think they could they could should be in from probably one or two. The probably three or four, because you know, depending upon what clusters of teams are, but you know, that'll stimulate people and you know, it'll make them a little bit frustrated. But I think it'll be great for college football. What about access to the higher end bowls, like say the Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl? If they're an off year, they're not a Final Four type. Of well, you know, I don't know exactly where the SEC they're in the process with the Big 12 of determining where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know who their bowl partner will be. Mm -hmm. So in years where they're there, we're not going to be there because they've got a close ended bowl like the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, the Orange Bowl uh, will be will host the ACC will host the Orange Bowl, and you know I think it's very likely that we'll be involved uh, on the other side of that game uh, sometimes. So we've been in discussions uh, for a long time with them, and I. I I expect that uh, that's where we'll be, but we're not prepared to make an announcement today.
And, and that would be shared. We would be there in some years, but not all years. There won't be a restriction on the number of teams. No, uh, there, there won't. I mean, the committee's going to make those judgments, you know, based on accomplishments, uh, strength of schedule, winning championships, being tiebreakers among teams that look otherwise similar. Uh, but the, their charge will be to select one through four uh, for the semifinals, and then other access teams, and there are no EQs. <laughs> so the system has has really broadened in terms of access. I'm talking about the semifinals doubling, the access points doubling, but the contract polls are for conferences that have historic relationships, whether in the Rose Bowl or the ACC and the Orange Bowl. Those are outside the system, and those are uh, separate from the system. But so there's a balance between our ability to make a game that we've got to release teams one through four into the system. But beyond that, that's the Rose Bowl. That's always been a Rose Bowl and always will be. I think the SEC uh, looked at that arrangement, decided to do the same thing with Big 12. And obviously, the, uh, there's market power in those conferences where they can make those arrangements with calls and television networks. And still, you can have another uh, structure that houses the one through four, two three, as well as the access games for um, other teams in the system. So the committee will help choose, let's say, uh, seven games or six games. They will essentially choose all the No, they won't. They won't choose the Rose Bowl. They won't choose the uh, SEC game. So, so they'll they'll select the access teams inside the bowl, and they'll select the one, one, four, two, three. So you really have. Um, They'll select probably, depending, probably uh, you know, four teams for the championship game and probably four others for access.